Good evening and welcome to the first ever WBIT selection show. I'm your host Kelsey Casper and I'm so excited to be joining you as we get ready to unveil the first field of teams to part to participate in the women's basketball invitation tournament. The bracket consists of 32 teams with the top 16 seeds having an opportunity to host. The first round of the tournament kicks off on March 21st, followed by the second round on the 24th and the quarterfinals taking place on the 28th. The top four teams will then head to Indianapolis for the semifinal and final games taking place at the historic Hinkle Fieldhouse on April 1st and the 3rd. Now, the first four teams out of the Division I Women's Basketball Championship will receive automatic bids to the WBIT and will be the top four seats. The remaining at-large field will be determined by an eight-member WBIT selection committee, and all games of the WBIT will be broadcasted on the ESPN platforms. So enough talking, let's go ahead and see which teams are heading to the postseason and taking place in the first ever WBIT. We begin at the top left of your bracket. The first team in, we're starting things off with Miami. The Hurricanes beat North Carolina in the second round after receiving a single bye in the ACC tournament to advance to the conference quarterfinal round. This group is led by the duo of Cheyenne Day Wilson and Jasmine Roberts, who each averaged 11 points per game. And headed to Florida to face the number one seed is Stony Brook. The Seawolves of Stony Brook play in the played in their first CAA championship in program history, they fell to Drexel in the final game this afternoon, which is only one of their four losses all season. This group won 16 of their first 17 games of the season and went on to go 16 and two in CAA play. Gigi Gonzalez was named Coastal Athletic Association Player of the Year, while head coach Ashley Langford earned Coach of the Year, leading this team to their first ever conference regular season title. On to the matchup, we see their first Big Ten team. It's the Fighting Illini of Illinois. The Illini earned the four seed. This group is in year number two under head coach Shauna Green. This Big Ten offense puts up on average 74 points per game while shooting 45% from the field. And they will have a date with Missouri State. The Lady Bears worked their way to the MVC championship game, their 17th appearance in program history in the conference title game, their last coming in 2019. The MVC newcomer of the year, Lacey Stokes, has been their go-to scorer all season, averaging 12 points per game. Halfway through this quarter of the bracket, we're on to the three seed, and it belongs to Tulsa. The Golden Eagles were the AAC regular season champs for the first time since the 2005-2006 season. Tulsa also secured 13 conference wins, which is tied for most in school history. This is a team that also defended their home court so well this season, going 13-1 in games played at the Reynolds Center. The Golden Hurricanes will battle it out with the Razorbacks because Arkansas is heading to the postseason. Arkansas ended the year with 18 wins and is led by Talia Scott, who averages 22 points per game and is the only player in the SEC to average more than 20 points per game. With the two wins in the WBIT, the Razor Packs could clinch back-to-back 20-win -back seasons under head coach Mike Neighbors. The final matchup in the top left. The second seed goes to Washington. Now, Washington started their season on an 11-game win streak, and the Huskies, they came away with some impressive wins along the way this season, including wins against USC, Oregon State, and Utah. Traveling out west to face the Huskies, it's Georgetown. The Hoyas worked their way to the Big East title game this season after upsetting Creighton in the semifinals. This was the Hoyas' first trip to the conference title game in program history, a remarkable season that isn't finished yet for Georgetown after they lost their head coach Tasha Butts this past March. We have eight teams down, 24 to go to the bottom left, earning the number one seed. It's Washington State. A marquee win over UCLA was one of the many highlights for the Cougars this season. That was one of two road wins over ranked opponents. As a team this season, the Cougars shot nearly 45% for the field while dishing out over 15 assists per game. Taking on the Huskies in the first round, it's Lamar. The Lamar Cardinals celebrated a regular season Southland, Southland Conference title this year after winning 13 straight games during the regular season. Lamar finished with an impressive 11-1 record on their home court. To the mat next matchup, Santa Clara earns the four seed. The Broncos went on a nine game winning streak to close out their regular season with 24 wins. This group only dropped one home game all season as sophomore Tess Hill led the way averaging just shy of 20 points per game. 
One of Santa Clara's strengths, the free throw line. The Broncos ranked second in nation with an astounding 81.7 free throw percentage. And they'll face off against BYU. The Cougars season is still alive. Lauren Gustin has made history in a Cougars uniform. The four-time all-conference first team selection is the fourth ranked rebounder in the history of NCAA women's basketball. And she is also BYU's all-time rebounding leader. Eight more teams to go in this half of the bracket. Next, Florida takes the three seed. The Gators snagged wins over both Missouri and Vanderbilt to advance to the quarterfinals of the SEC tournament. For the Gators, senior guard Leilani Correa was voted sixth woman of the year in the SEC. Facing the Gators in the first round, it's St. John's. This New York team is heading to better weather down south with an overall record of 17 and 14 and 11 and 8 Big East record. Unique Drake was a unanimous selection for the first team all conference, filling the stat sheet for the Red Storm with 12 20 plus point games this season. The final matchup on the left side of your bracket, Toledo is the two seed. With only one conference loss all season, Toledo was the Mid-America Conference regular season champs the last three years. The Rockets racked up both Matt Player of the Year and Coach of the Year honors as this team has won their last 13 regular season games heading into the conference tournament. And they will have a date with Cleveland State. What a season the Vikings have Cleveland State have put together. Horizon League regular season champs for the first time in program history after posting a program record 18 and 2 regular season. This team nearly swept the Horizon League awards as well as earning player of the year, defensive player of the year, newcomer of the year and coach of the year. Well, the first 16 teams unveiled in this year's WBIT bracket. We'll take a quick 30 second break and we'll gear up for the second half of our bracket. If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here, we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of bringing out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. Well, welcome back to the show. We just finished revealing the first 16 teams who will be competing in the first annual WBIT. So let's wait to no time jumping into the second half of the bracket. We pick things off in the top right of your bracket. It's another Big East team. Villanova earns the number one seed. The Wildcats are led by Lucy Olsen, who led the Big East in scoring this season with a whopping 23.3 points per game. She also earned most improved player in the conference. And traveling to face the Wildcats is VCU. The VCU Rams wrapped up the regular season games with a 26-4 record, breaking the regular season win marks of 25 set during the 2008-09 season. They also set the mark for highest conference winning percentage in program history with a 15-3 mark. To the next matchup, the four seed belongs to Virginia. The Cavaliers finished the regular season winning five of their last seven games, including two wins over ranked opponents, one of which was over in-state rival number five Virginia Tech. It's been an impressive year for the Virginia freshman Kymore Johnson, who leads the team in scoring and was named to the All-ACC second team and All-Freshman team. And who will be battling it out with the Cavaliers? It's High Point. High Point secured their 20th win of the season with a win over UNC Asheville in the Big South quarter final round. The Panthers had an impressive run to finish out the regular season, not losing a single game in the month of February. Two more matchups on the top right of your bracket. Up next, it's St. Joseph's. The Hawks 26 wins this season is the most under head coach Cindy Griffin and tied for the most in program history. St. Joseph also knows how to win on the road as the Hawks had a 14 and one away record this season. And facing off with the four seed, it's the Pirates of Seton Hall. The Pirates ranked, racked up eight conference wins this season and led by first team all conference selection Alana Barnes, who is one of the big players in the Big East to rank in the top 12 in points, rebounds, steals and blocks. One more matchup in this corner of the bracket, earning the two seed, it's California. Under head coach Sharman Smith, this year's team reached 18 wins with seven conference wins. That's the most since the 2018-19 season. 
The Golden Bears had an opening round win in the Pac-12 tournament and set a program record for three-pointers made. Taking on the Golden Bears, up next we have Hawaii. Hawaii is playing in the postseason for the third consecutive season. Hawaii went 17-3 in conference play this year and captured the Big West regular season title for the second time in the last three years. And here we go, the final eight teams in this year's field. Earning the last number one seed, it's Penn State. The Nittany Lions had one of the most best regular seasons in almost a decade, breaking several team records. This group shattered their single game three point record while all averaging over 84 points per game, which sits fourth all time in program history. This team also reached their 1000th win in program history this year. Well, this team won't have to travel far. Up next, it's George Mason. It was a historic regular season for the George Mason Patriots. This team set a new single season record for athletic 10 victories with 14 and regular season win record with 23 wins. An impressive turnaround under head coach Vanessa Blair Lewis as this Patriots team went 0 and 14 in conference play just last season. Moving down the left side, it's Ball State with the four seed. It was another record breaking season for the Cardinals. Ball State racked up 28 wins so far this year, breaking their program single season win record. Ball State rolled through conference play with a MAC record of 16 and two, with four players receiving all mid American conference awards this year. Taking on the Cardinals in the first round, it's Belmont. One of the top teams in the Missouri Valley Conference this season, the Belmont Bruins finished the regular season with 24 wins and on a six game win streak. Jalen Banks was named MVC Freshman of the Year, averaging over 12 points per game. To the bottom corner, earning the three seed, it's TCU. After battling in injuries and overcoming adversity this season, TCU is playing in the postseason. TCU added three walk-ons to the roster midway through the year, but this Horn Frog team still putting up impressive numbers, shooting 43% from the field and 36% from behind the arc. They're led by Sedona Prince, who averages 20 points per game. They will go head-to-head -head with North Texas in the first round. A 23 win regular season for the Mean Green earned them a spot in the postseason. In just his first year at the helm, Jason Burton earning AAC Coach of the Year by leading UNT to their third largest turnaround in the country. The Mean Green earned their first conference title since 1986 and also broke a whopping eight program records this season. Well, we made it to the last matchup. Here are the final two teams in this year's tournament. At the two seed from the SEC, it's Mississippi State. The Mississippi State Bulldogs have recorded back-to-back 20-win -back seasons, and they are led by the duo of Jessica Carter and Jerkayla Jordan, both second-team All-SEC honorees. And they will take on Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets made it to the second round of the ACC tournament this season, and they are led by the scoring duo of Tony Morgan and Kara Dunn, both averaging 15.6 points per game. Well, that will do it. The 32 teams will be participating in the first ever women's basketball invitation tournament. As just a reminder, the first round kicks off on March 21st with the semifinals and taking place at Hinkle Fieldhouse, April 1st and the 3rd in Indianapolis. And make sure to stay up to date with all the scores and brackets right here on NCAA.com. I'm Kelsey Casper, and it's been an honor to join you all tonight. A huge congratulations to all the teams, coaches, and staff members who have made it to this point of the season. Best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's WBIT. If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here, we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of bringing out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com tickets. Class dismissed.